Uppercut, uppercut, Sonic Boom! Well, hello there, humans of these other things, hope you are, where if you are, whatever you're doing, and if you're lucky enough indeed to be doing it too. Welcome back to the channel, I'm Bushkin, and today's video is about the brand spanking new Rhinoceronte. This is the top of the tree for the new Italian heavy line that's popped on the European tech tree. It's a really, really cool tank to look at. Uh, this is before I got the fuse camo. Bit of a bit of a slow burning fuse this tank indeed it is a uh, this is the first game i ever had in it i'm going to show you i played about 20 games in it. it's running about just a touch under 70 percent and about two and a half k average damage and those numbers i think well i don't think i'm a 77 percent player for starters so i think that's going to go down uh but the numbers about the two and a half k average damage and the the contribution to the, the battle is absolutely spot on i've been lucky so far in my playing of the rhinoceronte that i've actually been able to find a lot of maps where i've had opportunities to go hull down in good places um it's a tank that has a very interesting armor profile the biggest part of its armor is that it is extraordinarily low to the ground this is a low low slung italian heavy it's actually very unique looking uh, the turret is more gun with little man, let's say, the side. I was running it with calibrated shells at this point. I've switched out of calibrated shells. Um, but you can see the heat there. You get up to about 362 millimeters of heat pen on this. And it was quite interesting. See how I'm waving the gun around in the air there? That's a move you're going to have to get used to doing with this tank. Because you have a weak spot directly above the gun. Like, it's literally on top of the gun a tiny little triangle triangle that's just the weirdest weak spot but it's there um but you can negate that by waving the gun around you are very much prone to taking damage if you are not slightly elevated and hull down creating angles on the upper glacis as well because the tank's armor profile is not about thickness it is another one of those tanks where you want to basically have extraordinarily precise angling like if you are at the same level they're just going to go through your drive wheel or your upper plate they can do that and i'll show you in, in a second a um a clip of one of the biggest problems you're going to face in this tank it is a genuine heavy tank i mean it it has reasonable heavy tank hit point pull uh, it's it's not like you're gonna struggle from that perspective it's dpm is again nothing spectacular i mean the hit point pull is on the low side 2350 so it's not it's not about to set any records for mouse like hit point levels but what it does have is a two shot uh, auto reloader like the cranwagen but different uh, you've got about eight seconds after you fire your first shell to reload and then it's about nine and a half seconds on your second shell to reload there is a 3.3 second gap between the shots, which means you can dump 800 alpha in three and a half seconds, which is actually very, very nice. And then be completely reloaded and ready to do it again in about 17 seconds after that. This is your problem. Do you see this? You can hear the sizzle. Um, that's actually going through my upper glacis there. But I'll give you a look at what what you can see as a crane bargain running calibrated shells on even ground versus the rhinoceronte yeah this is it the crane's probably got about 360 millimeters 363 i think it is i don't know something like that of heat pen on the crane bargain and if you're not slightly elevated and really angling that down taking full advantage of all seven degrees of your gun depression then you will get penned. And that goes for any of the TDs and such. If they roll high pen, you're going to get penned through that uh, upper deck. That being said, I've heard some murmurings that it's been a bit disappointing with only seven degrees of gun depression. I, honest to God, feel that if this thing had more than seven degrees of gun depression, it would be overpowered. The ability to have to overextend like that to get the shot off it's it's something that needs to be in place for a tank like the rhinoceronte otherwise you are going to really be able to just jiggle and wiggle and, and farm a lot with this tank it, it really is i'll show you a couple of more gameplays with it because i have played it for a good solid 
an hour and a half, and I feel like I've got a pretty good handle on the tank itself. Um, calibrated shells is something I would probably swing backwards and forwards on. Uh, it's 257 millimeters of pin on your standard AP rounds. But you also have 65 millimeter HE that does 520 alpha. So if you were to run calibrated shells, you go all the way up to 362 millimeters of pin, I think it is, maybe even 370. Uh, it's around about there. I'm looking at the screen now, not looking at the stats. Uh, but your DPM is obviously not where it's at. Everyone who's played something like a Kranwagen or a Progetto knows that you're looking to burst with this. You really are looking to be the uh, the giver of burst damage. Do you see how lovely the heat is straight through the upper deck on the Ho Re? It's, uh, it's a genuinely concerning thing if you're running a TD and you run into this because it will drop 800 into you pretty consistently. What about the gun handling, Wushka? What about the mobility? Well, Mobility is standard. Uh, 40 kilometers an hour is your top speed, which, yeah, it's all right. It's not, not like, it's not assault tanking, right? And your power to weight ratio is actually pretty good. 15.85, uh, your power to weight ratio and good terrain resistance stats. So it bears up that 15.85. It's middle of the road overall for a, a heavy tank, tending to like maybe upper middle, you're not going to be as fast as, say, I don't know, a WZ or something like that, but or a Strev K, but you're going to be quick enough to get to your spots and and hold. And it's interesting to me that I ran into a lot of crane bargains today against this thing. Oh, how good's this, too? I forgot about that. The way it fires off these Katushka rockets when you get an actual kill, I really enjoyed that. Nice camo. Good job on the camo. Uh... It is, overall, a solid tank, mobility-wise. In terms of gun handling, hmm, I, it went pretty well for me. The aim time is just a shade under two seconds, but the dispersion is very good. Uh, your dispersion on this is 0.31. Now, that that is good. 0 0.306 is the actual dispersion. But 0 0.31, if you round it up, that is very, very nice. Um, and your aim time, it feels good. Like the gun handling feels good. It's on the move dispersion was what was surprising to me. It felt like it was really good at on the move rotation and the behind the scenes stuff on Blitzstars bears that out. It's 0.16 um, on the move on good terrain, on the move, not on good terrain, on the move of the tank a 0.15 on rotation of the turret and 0.08 as a coefficient when you're wiggling the gun up and down, which is excellent. That is really good. And that was borne out in when I was playing the game. It felt very solid at taking snapshots and you can see the dispersion isn't really climbing up here. And I think that's going to be an underrated factor with this gun and this tank in itself is it's not just about getting hull down. It's also able to really quickly move forward, take a shot without waiting for an aim time, maybe two, and come back in. And that's important when you're running a gun that's going to dump every 3.3 seconds. You can't have an enormous bloom. Anyway, this is the final game, and I'm going to show you this is really well suited to this. You can see this is a great spot for the Rhinoceronte because look how low the profile on this tank is. It is very, very low to the ground. Um, I was surprised that didn't go in, too. And I'm glad that it, that happened just after. I don't know what the Yo's doing here. I don't love how people do this on Falls Creek all the time. They just rush in the middle. And it's like, dude, I mean, no one's even spotted yet. And you're just in the middle. And then he gets flagged. Did I feel bad? Ooh, should I be up there? And I'm like, no, nope, taking my time, doing my thing. Waiting for both to reload just in case there's an opportunity. Doesn't hurt. There we go. And there's the opportunity. A lot of uh, ping issues for me at the moment. Uh, you can see there, I'm having some Aussie ping issues. It's something that happens pretty much on the regular for the, uh, the Aussies. I should have waited. That's that's now 17 seconds. If I had waited uh, another half a second there, I would have got two shots in 
as it was, I would have got maybe three shots, but I got two shots anyway in the end. Um, we're just holding this angle, and this is the perfect spot. You can see there's cover on my right. My turret is so low to the ground that it's very difficult to get any shots here. There's that really good gun handling for a heavy tank. Like, this is... 0.3 dispersion basically if you're running double provisions and you've got all your bells and whistles on and if you've got all the crew skills and everything this tank will really start to shine uh, just rolling forward here looking for opportunities we waited for the second shell to reload there learn our lesson from the first one and so that is an 800 dump and then leaves the yo in the very precarious position of going up with about 1200 hit points and going back with a lot less uh, and being patient again. We're a tank down, but if you are able to, and it, I mean, Falls Creek, Yamato Harbor, these are the kind of maps I think that are just coming into rotation now, which do help the Rhinoceronte. We're going to take one there from the A100. I was hopeful of not doing it. I'm not going to waste a shell. I'm just going to wait. And then we take one from out the back. I'm like, Oh, that's interesting. AMX must be out there. There we go. Nice to get a max roll. 525. Another one in. And then just push it all the way across and let the reload happen. And we've tidied this up nicely. This has gone from a tank down to being two tanks up. Now that goes back, but I feel pretty confident here now. There's three tanks left. We can get down here into the E100. We've conserved hit points. It's quick enough. One pussycat. Just wait, let it happen, let the radical go down, make sure of it. And there goes the... I love the fuse camo, it is very, very cool. Cost six and a half thousand gold. Uh, I'm now moving back here because I figured that Fosh is going to go around and try and get rid of our low hit point Fosh 155. And this was in fact correct, he did go around. But mm, the issue I had here was... I didn't reset my camo uh, after going through. Get the tracking shot. You know, take one. That's cool. Save the hit points. Put another one in. I should have reset the camo here. The Amex was actually watching for this. Luckily, I turned my turret in that direction and I bounced it. Uh, could have been very ugly, but anyway. He still got that done. We had plenty of hit points left at the end. And that's it. The Rhinoceronte. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, I'll do some videos on the lower tier tanks, but it's nice to know what you're aiming for at the top of the line and if it's worth it. And I think it is. I think it's a genuinely fun tank. Look after yourselves. Remember to like the videos and subscribe. Until next time, stay safe on the battlefield. Bye for now.